What's up guys, Charles from Street Dance Dev. Christmas is about a week away, my favorite time of the year. And if you are considering buying yourself a new camera or a camera for a loved one, I've got some ideas for you in this video. I'm gonna show you all seven of my cameras that I own and I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of each camera. Obviously, I can't really go through in detail, so I'm just gonna tell you within about two to three minutes which camera will be suitable for you and for your budget. I've got two Micro Four Thirds cameras, three APS-C cameras, and two full frame cameras. And five out of seven of these cameras are actually entry level camera. So you can consider buying something for yourself this Christmas. So let's get straight to the video. So how are we gonna do this video? I'm gonna start off with the cheapest camera and move all the way to the most expensive camera to see which camera fits your budget and filming style. So right now, first up, we have the EM1. Right now on Amazon, the EM1, which is a 4K mirrorless camera, actually only costs with a kit lens about $279. You can see how small it is. A very, very small, tiny camera. This is a 20 megapixel micro four thirds camera. So here's a look at what a Sony full frame sensor camera looks like in comparison to a Sony APS-C sensor camera. And last of all would be a micro four thirds camera. We all know that Sony's don't make micro four thirds cameras. They only have full frame and APS-C, but believe it or not, they have seemed to loan their technology, their sensor, the Sony Exmor sensor, which is really good, the Micro Four Thirds version to the EM1. So this EM1 is actually using a Sony Exmor sensor, but the Micro Four Thirds version. So being a Micro Four Thirds camera, the crop sensor ratio would be times two. So if you're shooting at 12 millimeters, effectively it would be 12 times two, which is a 24 megapixel full frame equivalent when it comes to your field of view. I bought this EM1 with the kit lens at 12 to 40 millimeters f3.5 to 5.6. So is this EM1 good for daylight photography? The answer is yes. Even in really bright sunny conditions, it has a really high dynamic range with its Sony Exmor sensor. And is it good for night photography? The answer is also yes. Also it comes down to the Sony Exmor sensor that it's using. So now is this camera good for video? There are a lot of pros and cons. Firstly, it doesn't have a microphone output. So if you are doing vlogging, no, it's not a really good camera to use. Is it good for YouTube? Nope, as well, because you can't use any microphone on this. But is it good for cinematic videos? The answer is yes. The 1080p 60 frames per second in this camera with the EIS is really good. Very good stabilization. But the 4K capability does not have EIS, first of all. And it is even more cropped in by another two times. So if you are using a 12 millimeters, it will be 12 times 4. Just normal filming and cinematic videos. Yes, is it good for travel vlogs and YouTube? The answer is no. And lastly, is the continuous autofocus system good on this camera for video? The answer is sort of. It's pretty average uh, autofocus. It is a bit slow. It does perform better in bright conditions. In low light, it does seem to stutter and pretty slow autofocusing. So autofocusing, I would probably give it about a six upon 10. Another good thing about this camera being a Micro Four Thirds camera is that you can use Panasonic, Leica, Olympus, and even the third party lenses, such as Sigma Micro Four Thirds and so on. So you do have a lot of variation of lenses, but it does not work on a focal reducer. I find all focal reducers out there to try to make this Micro Four Thirds into an APS-C camera none of them works so take note of that so in summary is this a good camera for 279 bucks the answer is yes you do have the flexibility to use the different lenses available 1080p 60 frames per second with eis is really strong and photography is really great as well so right now we come to the second cheapest camera among the seven which is the canon 200d this is an aps-c camera and right now on amazon only costs about 549 bucks which is pretty cheap for this Canon 200D. They have come up with the newer versions, the 250D as well, which has 4K capability at 24 frames per second. But being a Canon, we all know how bad the 4K quality is. So is this camera good for photography? Yes. 
in daylight and at night as well in low light conditions being an APS-C camera. The only comment that I would have about this camera would be the kit lens. When you buy this, you probably would want to buy this body only and get a better lens like a 10 to 18 millimeters f4 lens which is also relatively cheap this 18 to 55 kit lens the 3.5 to 5.6 which comes with the camera auto focusing is really really noisy so if you are doing some travel vlogs and youtube videos unless you switch it into manual focus the auto focusing is going to ruin your video and does it have 4k no it does not the 250d does this has 1080p 60 frames per second and video quality is really good it has eis as well and some of the lens like the other lenses available this one does not but they do come with optical image stabilization as well but the EIS on this 200D is pretty all right. Is it good for travel vlogs and YouTube? Yes, it has an articulating screen, so that would come in really, really handy. Picture quality and the autofocusing system is really good, pretty fast as well. Compared to a lot of other cameras, if you are specifically taking videos, this would be a cheaper alternative to the Canon 80D and the Canon 77D, which are more expensive cameras. Level, if you are fine shooting at 1080p 60 frames per second, then probably you would want to choose this and save the money for other lenses instead of getting the 77D or the 80D because they, in terms of video quality, they have the same specs as this entry-level camera. But if you are moving more to photography and you want better image quality and more autofocus points, getting a Canon 80D would be more appropriate but for video this is good enough for you as equivalent specs so is this camera worth it yes in my opinion it's really really great photographs are good enough video is good enough as well just get another lens which has quieter autofocusing and yeah basically you're set to go really really cheap i used this camera for a lot of my YouTube videos previously because of its articulated screen and the 10 to 18 millimeters. If you're using a shotgun mic, the 10 to 18 millimeters f4 lens would be really ultra wide angle and give you a good view if you're doing travel vlogs, not like the 18 millimeters, your face would be probably taking up most of the video. So really, really good camera, entry level camera, consider this. $549 if you have the budget and throw in another 200 bucks for the 10 to 18 millimeters f4 lens so right now we come to the third cheapest camera and this camera is an entry-level Fujifilm APS-C camera it was launched about a couple of months ago and I actually bought this camera on launch day itself currently on Amazon retailing about 699 US dollars is the Fujifilm X-A7 so what really caught my attention to buy this camera besides the fact that i've never really used a fujifilm camera before is the way it looks it looks really sleek nice chrome finish it's actually pretty plasticky uh, but it's really light really portable it has a microphone output which is really nice on such a small camera you do have a hot shoe mount as well but the thing that really caught my eye was the size of this lcd screen on the back of the camera it is an articulating screen so really good for travel vlogs and youtube as well and the screen resolution is really high a lot better than a lot of the other cameras that i'm using even in bright daylight with the sun above you the screen is very clear and the colors are still really vibrant so is this fujifilm camera good for photography yes it is in daylight conditions even with the sun behind you the dynamic range is even better than the canon eos rp i actually had done a video on that you can check it out i'll leave the link in the description the xa7 against the rp is it good for night photography so far it's been pretty impressive uh, being an aps-c camera even using this kit lens which is a 15 to 45 millimeters f 3.5 to 5.6 it looks relatively nice and clear even in low light conditions so is this fujifilm xa7 good for video the answer to me is no i expected a lot more coming out of this entry level camera but even the 1080p video was really disappointing it's most of the times it's totally underexposed even in bright conditions in daylight and the exposure comp compensation is really really bad as well so 1080p video is practically unusable on this Fujifilm X-A7 but how about the 4k video the 4k video is a lot better 
in terms of its exposure compensation and its colors and especially the autofocus. In 1080p, the autofocusing on this camera is extremely bad. When I say extremely, it's extremely bad. But in 4K, the autofocusing does seem to improve together with the uh, exposure compensation and the whole overall quality of the video itself. So 4K 30 frames per second is pretty usable. And one thing really great is that it's 4K video is not cropped in like the Canon EOS RP and stuff. So no crop on the 4K video. So is it good for travel vlogs? Yes, due to its articulating screen. Is it good for YouTube? Yes, if, you, if you're doing your videos in 4K, 24 frames per second or 4K 30 frames per second, the autofocusing is a lot better. Uh, it is a bit slow to focus in and out, but it is a lot better than 1080p video. So overall, is this camera worth 700 US dollars with the kit lens? To me personally, no. You're probably better off buying the Sony a6100, which is exactly the same price. And you know you're gonna get really great photographs and video maybe without the stabilization or picture profiles but the a6100 would probably kick the ass out of this camera so or if you want a fujifilm camera i've heard really really good reviews on another entry-level camera i don't know why they have so many entry-level cameras but it is the fujifilm xt30 that fujifilm xt30 is maybe a few hundred bucks more expensive than this but the reviews on that camera is extremely good and a lot better than the XA7. So right now we come to the fourth cheapest camera and probably one of my favorite cameras that I've ever used is the Sony a6500. With the kit lens right now on Amazon probably costs about a thousand 150 bucks and I have a lot of good things to say about this camera and also it has its flaws but in terms of whether or not it's worth it for its price right now 100% yes. This is a Sony APS-C camera with super fast and accurate autofocus, continuous autofocus for video especially. It's really, really great. Just throw on a nice Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens and you have the perfect combination for photos or videos. It can go up to 4K 24 frames per second. It also goes 1080p 120 frames per second. It doesn't have an articulating screen. It has a flip up or tilt up screen, which the screen really isn't very good. The LCD screen in broad daylight is a little bit dark. You can't see much. You probably need to buy a screen protector and the viewfinder isn't very good as well. Another issue is that it tends to overheat and battery life isn't very good as well. So if you are planning to use this for a whole day of photos or videos, probably get a few more batteries like three or four but in terms of picture quality video quality autofocusing and in terms of the di different picture profiles this camera is one of the best cameras that i've ever used so is it worth the 1150 definitely yes again a resounding yes and get this sigma 16 millimeters if you do have additional budget this sony a6500 in comparison to the a6400 which is newer than this, has in-body image stabilization, which is relatively good as well. So if you are asking why not get the A6400, which is newer, or the A6100, which is cheaper, or even the A6600. So in comparison to the A6400, the A6400 does not have IBIS. This has IBIS. They are relatively the same camera. The A64 is newer and slightly more expensive and probably better for travel vlogs and YouTube because you can flip your screen all the way up but it does have its flaws as well you need to get a small rig cage if you're using the a6400 for travel vlogs or youtube videos i still use this for youtube videos because of its super fast autofocus and accurate autofocus um, i just normally gauge where my face is in the camera because being an APS-C train 16 millimeters or even using this kit lens which is 15 millimeters or 16 millimeters is still relatively a good field of view if you're doing travel vlogs and stuff it does come with a microphone output port it does use a micro usb port as well and it does have flashlight like this which is pretty cool and in comparison to the a6100 the a6100 does not have ibis nor does it have picture profiles so if you do your own color grading and this Sony cameras the picture profiles for Sony cameras are really really good for color grading like the S 
log two and adds gamuts kind of stuff. And in comparison to the A6600, the A6600 is really expensive right now, probably costing about 1,007, 1,600 US. So this camera, in my opinion, besides not having a flip up screen, and if you're shooting outdoors, this LCD screen, you would probably get a screen protector uh, anti-glare screen protector and if you use the viewfinder the viewfinder isn't really very sharp but in terms of other stuff picture quality video quality autofocus even audio quality really really good on this a6500 so is it worth it definitely yes i would give this an 8 upon 10. okay so right now we come to my favorite camera among all seven reason being is that i just love this camera this is the panasonic g9 with the 12 to 60 kit lens, the 3.5 to 5.6. And this is probably one of the most underrated cameras there are in the market. Prices have dropped quite a lot, but they have come up with the new firmware update uh, last month. So that improves the autofocus. So this camera right now costing on Amazon will be about 900 bucks. Throwing the kit lens, probably be about 8,002, slightly more expensive than the A6500. But if you really want a good, good lens, same as the A6400, get the Micro Four Thirds version of the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Combination with this is absolutely brilliant. One of the sharpest videos and picture quality among any of the cameras that I've ever used. This is a Micro Four Thirds camera, so you can use any Olympus Panasonic Leica lenses, Sigma lenses and stuff. So the grip you can see is really, really nice grip awesome the grip is nice it's weather seal is that it has an articulating screen which is one of the best screens there are in the market the viewfinder is relatively good and big as well it's good for cinematic videos it's good for travel vlogs it's good for youtube it has different color picture profiles as well for your color grading the best part is it can shoot up to 4k 60 frames per second which is really really awesome for a camera which is only costing about 1000 to 1300 bucks can shoot 4k 60 frames per second this camera is actually one of the best cameras for taking pictures that panasonic has ever launched well i tend to kind of disagree with that pictures in daytime is really good in night pictures are really bad even the em1 can take probably better pictures than this camera at night i don't know why pictures at night are not really very good but video quality is absolutely brilliant whether you're shooting at night or in daytime if you get a 60 millimeters f 1.4 you will get that really nice bulky effect really really nice exposure compensation is really great LCD screen is really great. Autofocusing with the new update has improved and is better than the rest of my cameras except probably the Sony a6500. So is it worth it for cinematic videos, travel vlogs, YouTube? The answer is yes. But if you're gonna use travel vlogs, the 16 millimeters f1.4 won't be so appropriate. The kit lens, which is a 12 millimeters or 24 millimeters full frame equivalent, would be more appropriate. It does have a microphone uh, output as well, which you can change the sensitivity and stuff. So that's really, really helpful. The buttons, the grip, the quality overall, one of the best cameras in the market right now for its price. So is it worth it? Yes, I would give this an eight and a half upon 10. So moving on to the sixth most expensive camera is the Sony a7 II. This is the latest camera that I bought on Black Friday last month and it actually right now on Amazon is actually cheaper than the Panasonic G9. This is a Sony full frame camera launched in 2014. The reason why I bought it besides this being really cheap right now only cost on Amazon about a thousand bucks. A thousand US dollars for a full frame Sony camera, why not? So I took the gamble and bought this 2014 camera. One thing I did research on is that they still came up with firmware updates for this a7 II a few months ago so pretty nice to still have support on a five-year-old camera like this so by right this camera should be in position number five and the g9 should be in position number six but we'll just ignore that for the moment so i haven't updated the firmware on this a7 II, but i've been using it for a week now and i really like this camera total setup maybe about 1000 grams so that's relatively light the grip is really nice. The positions of the buttons are really great as well. Uh, what one thing that I really like is 
like the Fujifilm X-A7, the LCD screen, it's really bright, very nice and vibrant, even if you're outdoors. Another thing which I really like is the viewfinder. Among all seven cameras, A7 II has the best viewfinder. I can actually see everything really, really clearly and sharply. So I'm pretty impressed with the viewfinder. And coming back to the LCD screen, it is also like the A6500 where it is just a tilt up screen. Battery life is also pretty bad on this. It actually uses the same battery as the Sony A6500. So if you're going to do filming the whole day or taking photographs and videos, probably get three or four of these batteries. This Sony A7 II, just to take note, the autofocus continuous system is not the same as the A6500 and above the cameras. This is actually using the older autofocusing system. So it's not as good as the newer Sony cameras from the A6500 and upwards. So in terms of photography, day and night, very nice. In terms of video, that's something uh, that I was pretty disappointed. It can shoot up to 1080p 60 frames per second, but being a full frame camera, I expected a lot more from the video quality out of this. I did a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison with the A6500 and the A6500 basically is so much better in 1080p video and the A6500 can also shoot 4K. This does not shoot 4K. Also video quality, maybe not so good. So is this good for cinematic videos? Probably yes. It won't be as sharp as a lot of other cameras out there in the market. Is it good for travel vlogs? No, because basically it is a tilt up screen like this. You do, of course, uh, get a microphone output. So that's really nice. The weight of it is pretty good for travel vlogs as well. It's just that like the A6500, you just need to gauge where you are in frame of the field of view. So is this A7 II good for YouTube videos? The answer is no as well. Overall, basically video quality is pretty poor as compared to the other cameras that I have. My previous YouTube video I actually shot in 1080p 30 frames per second with uh, S-Log2 as gamut and the overall video quality was really, really dark. I'm not so sure why. I'm using the kit lens, which is a 28 to 70 millimeters f 3.5 and 5.6. But even if I use the Sony a6500 with the kit lens, the video is so much better and brighter. I did film my previous video on this camera and I actually got a comment from one of the YouTubers asking if I filmed that video on a MacBook Air webcam. So it must be really, really bad. Is this worth it for a thousand bucks? I would think not. There are a lot of other choices out there. The dynamic range, I did compare it to the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 also did better in terms of dynamic range. So in my opinion, basically give this Sony a7 II a miss. Okay, so right now we come to the last and seventh camera, the most expensive cameras among my seven. This is the Canon EOS RP, Canon's latest entry level full frame camera. And right now this costs about 8,005 to 1,600 bucks if you were to buy this on Amazon. My kit lens is the 24 to 105 millimeters f4 lens. And so far I have more good things to say about this camera than bad things. Uh, first of all, as I love the grip, the weight distribution of this camera and the grip is really, really nice. I even prefer this to the Panasonic G9 and the Panasonic G9 is well known to have a really nice grip to fit the hand. But somehow I like the grip and the weight distribution with the kit lens for the EOS RP. So the body does come with electronic image stabilization and this kit lens also has OIS. So stabilization is pretty good on this. Not as good as the G9 of course, but pretty usable video stabilization in this camera together with the kit lens. It does have a headphones jack, a microphone jack. It has an articulating screen for travel vlogs maybe this will be a little bit too heavy for you to carry around it might might be a little bit tiring because this kit lens is really really heavy uh, the body is relatively light but the kit lens is heavy as hell articulating screen is it good for youtube definitely yes is it good for cinematic videos 1080p 60 frames for cinematic videos is absolutely uh, brilliant one thing i hate about this camera is the 4k which is absolutely terrible in my opinion um, 4k 24 frames per second is available on the esrp but is it usable no it does not have eis and it's cropped in by 1.6 times so in terms of taking photographs in low light and bright conditions 
in low light it's really good in bright conditions it is good but if you are having the sun behind you the dynamic range isn't as good as i predicted it to be autofocusing is relatively good as well with his dual pixel autofocus system. In summary, in terms of photographs, day photographs are really sharp, except with the sun behind you, dynamic range isn't really that great, even if you shoot in raw. Night photographs are really great. 1080p and below video is great. 4K sucks. Articulating screen, it is heavy, so if you're looking for portability, probably travel vlogs and stuff not really recommended the grip is really nice to feel in your hand and uh, yeah basically is it worth it in my opinion a thousand six hundred bucks for this EOS RP I would personally go with the Panasonic G9 which is cheaper or the A6500 if I were to compare among all my cameras that I have I would rather save the money get a G9 or get the Sony a6500. So unfortunately for me, in terms of the price, whether it's worth it or not, I would say no. Yep, so basically that's it guys. Just a quick run through of all seven cameras that I've used over the last year. Uh, just to give you my personal opinions, I did buy all these cameras with my own money. So this is not sponsored or anything. So I really give, try to give my own personal opinions uh, honest personal opinion so yeah merry christmas guys hope you get a camera a really nice camera and lens this christmas and i'll see you in the next one guys peace